Hi, um, fellow physics students. We uh, did problem 16, and we shall introduce a group. I'm Jason Cruz. I'm Jake Plotz. I'm David Morris. I'm Eric Green. And <laughs> here we go. Here we go. So, for problem 16, it is stated that we are trying to determine the magnitude and direction at point P from these lines of currents here. And what the problem states, or it gives us, is that we could treat this these lines of currents yeah. as being infinitely long and extendingly infinitely far, which is what, di what we did. And we also treated point P as the origin in order to do our math and magic. So starting off, we started with the basic bios of art law, which gives us a constant mu over 4 pi times i times sine theta ds over r squared. And before we went on to do the actual math for this problem, we substituted several variables in. So for example, for sine theta, um, for sine theta, so each of these square lengths is treated as, is given to us as A. So for sine theta, we found that from point P, it's going to be A over the square root of A squared plus Y squared, because that gives us, so... It, it would be opposite over hypotenuse, so A over R, and R being A squared plus Y squared, or, and that's going for this direction up or down, which is in the Y direction, so for the X direction as well, it would be A over the square root of A squared plus X squared. And we also, when we were looking through the worksheets, we also found this part of the problem right here, which is the limit as U approaches infinity of U over A squared times the square root of u squared plus a squared gives us 1 over a squared, which would be useful in the problem later on. <laughs> and I will let Demo take over the math. Okay, so starting off, we realize that we have to integrate two sections because we have this section of the wire and this section of the wire. So we have to take the, um, the integral of each point along the wire, and since it's infinitely long, it starts at negative infinity up to point A because the length is A and it's basically one unit above point P. So here we plug in the bios of our law. Sine of theta is going to be A over A squared plus Y squared, the square root of that because we're taking in the Y direction. And then we just pull out the constants, mu naught, uh, the current A and 4 pi. And we're left with this and there's a formula for this to give us this equation right here, that the integral of that gives us this equation. And so then we just plug in the variables and we solve the constant outside. We plug in A for Y right here. And so then this A crosses off with an A, an A, an A on the bottom and an A over here. And then we just plug in infinity over here and using this limit right here, we can determine that that is equal to 1 over a squared. Solve the constants, end up with this using algebra, and the more we simplify it, we are able to come down to this, and then we can bring the rad 2 to the top by multiplying the top and bottom by 1 over rad 2, giving us just to this equation, and since it's basically going in the same direction, it's going clockwise around point P. We can determine that the magnitude of the magnetic field of point P is just this one and this one together. And since they're basically both in the same direction, at the same points, it's going to be the same. So we just double what we have here. And we end up with this. That's the answer. Oh, and using the right hand rule, we determine that the magnetic field is out of the page. <laughs>